are live at Sapphire Now 2018. I'm Michael Krigsman. I'm an industry analyst and the host of CXO Talk. And right now we are talking with Colin Boyd, Chief Information Officer of Komatsu America. And that also includes mining. Hey Colin, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good to meet you. So Komatsu America and mining, tell us about that. So the two predominant businesses in the company are construction and mining, construction being the largest, and uh, that's where the company's origins come from. Um, so if you see very large yellow machines, bulldozers and excavators working in construction sites, there's a good chance they'll be Komatsu. Uh, and then they also have a mining business, the giant trucks that work in the surface mines, um, good chance they'll be Komatsu as well. Oh, I've seen those, those are really big. Really big. Um, yeah, it's a little intimidating when they go past a truck the size of a house carrying more than 200 tons. Now these machines are chock full of really interesting technology. Oh yes. Uh, you talk about autonomous vehicles, the mining industry has that already. Um, with some of the technology that's going into the construction products, they have the same technology coming out. So we have a product called Smart Construction. You can map a three-dimensional model of your construction site you can then map out the three-dimensional model that you want it to look like when you're finished. Here's where the material is, and here's what it has to look like. We want a 6% grade slope. Press the button, let the excavator deliver. Now, how about data? Because where there's tech, data soon to follow. Yeah, I think most people like me are adjusting our brains to what's big data. Um, you know, I'm old enough to remember when megabytes and gigabytes was big data and now you can't count the terabytes, we're into petabytes and exabytes. The most complex machines have maybe 8,000 monitors on them streaming data real time off the control systems on the machines. Um, Yes, it's a lot of data. So you have mining and you have data mining. <laughs> yeah, so in my world, mining probably has two different meanings. We produce mining machines and we mine the data off the mining machines. I love it. So you've got these machines and they're basically, it's like IoT at global scale. <laughs> yes, I think, I mean, they're, they're huge capital assets. You know, customers have hundreds of millions of dollars tied up in these machines because it's a capital intensive, equipment intensive in business these days. Um, so again, as a supplier, you, if you want to be responsive to your customers, you need to make every effort to help your customers make the best use of those assets. And how about the way you run your business? So you're the Chief Information Officer. Tell us about that role and the scope of your responsibilities. I think it's evolving. Um, the distinction for me between a CIO role and a CTO role is kind of starting to blur that you traditionally used to be your CIO role, your infrastructure, your applications. When you get into the product technology, IT then becomes part of the solution. So you're integrated with the engineers designing the product and the people servicing the product. So really you become a de facto CTO, even if you're not officially a CTO. How does that actually work? Because yes, historically we think about IT as being the folks who are running the internal, say, back-end systems, and if we have a very expansive definition, maybe that means applications as well. But this is something quite different that you're describing. Yes, if you went sort of back 10 years prior to the big data revolution, yeah, the IT, you could have called us the backroom guys, you know, where uh, we were usually visible when things weren't working. As long as things are all working okay, that's where you were. My world now is both. So talk about a large mine with hundreds of millions of dollars of capital equipment being deployed at the mine. Um, small percentage improvements in the operational efficiency of that equipment means millions of dollars to a mining customer. So it becomes very much a partnership. They are trying to optimize their overall operational efficiency at a mine. Um, that would include all of their people as well as all of the equipment, but the equipment's the big money. Mining stopped being people intensive industry a long time ago. So you're, you're collecting technology related data that then translates directly into business information. You know, we're close to a position where the machine can start to call for maintenance. Um, machine to machine is coming. Collision avoidance will be an initial place to start. You really don't want one of those giant trucks <laughs> hitting another giant truck, that's not good. Um, so safety for sure. Um, and imposing 
uh, operational parameters that would stop a machine operator taking it out of the safety envelope of the machine, overloading a truck. Um, so yeah, the trucks all have tonnage sensors on them and they'll tell you to stop if you're trying to overload them. That's where you're changing this, this machine and operational data into something that has c concrete business value. Yes, so one example, we, we know where the half a million machines are, we know how much they're being used, therefore we know how many hours they're going through in terms of operations. This gives us direction in terms of when their scheduled maintenance is coming up. So if we know that you're hammering the machines really hard in one country, the spare parts inventory will move in. Um, if we see that your market has declined in your country and a lot of those machines are parked, we'll move that inventory elsewhere. Now, Colin, we're at Sapphire now, and so I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, what are you doing with SAP? Yeah, we have uh, quite a number of systems around the world. So KAC and KMC, the, the two companies I'm accountable for, you would probably call them as predominantly SAP shops. We're putting the plans in place to, to move to S4 HANA. Um, so that's one of the main reasons I'm here at Sapphire, is to learn more about that process. So it's really not just the machines, but that data piece is equally important, or maybe that's the lever that helps the customer get the ultimate uh, maximum financial benefit out of the machine that is possible. Yes, and to do that, you have to sh shift the culture in your organization. You you have to move from a, we are a manufacturer of machines to we are a provider of solutions. And some of the technologies they've been talking about here the past two days are definitely going to come into play. You can see a machine learning environment. You could imagine then a whole fleet of machines trying to optimize themselves as a fleet rather than an individual machine trying to optimize its own individual actions, whatever it's doing, but it's not so conscious about the rest. You've, you could have all of the machines meshed, communicating with each other and making recommendations on overall efficiency of the entire operation with all the machines together. I mean, it's coming. I can imagine a swarm of machines, each the size of a house. Yeah. That's something to think about. You'll see it in your lifetime, there's no doubt about that. Wonderful, Colin Boyd, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.